Hey guys, me again, and today we're going to do a gear that I use video. Now I have a lot of stuff, I mean I got a closet full of stuff, and obviously there's the Batman right there, it's got all kinds of equipment on it, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over each piece of gear individually, and then kind of show you a compilation of everything at the end of the video. So I'll probably do helmets, jackets, gloves, etc. You guys will get to see kind of everything that I wear at any given time, and then maybe I'll go over like outfits that I use for colder weather, warmer weather, that kind of thing. Uh, but without further ado, here goes! Okay, first things first. This is my regular helmet that I wear on a regular basis when I'm not moto vlogging or when you guys see me doing stuff where the camera's pointed at me. This is a Torque Prodigy T10 in absolute blue with a dark smoke lens on it. Now, I personally love this helmet. It's pretty quiet as far as wind noise. It doesn't have a whole lot going on. It does have a little bit of a whistle when the vents are open, but I don't mind that. Uh, the dark smoke lens is awesome. I prefer to ride with smoke lens. I'm so used to it that I kind of even prefer it at night. My eyes are kind of photosensitive, so I get irritated by like high beams and stuff. So I like to ride with a smoke lens. Uh, it's got vents on the side here as well. You guys can really see that. It's kind of a small vent on the side. And one in the front there. And that opens up. Here, let me get my hand over there. That's closed. Or no, sorry. That's open. That's closed. Ha! <laughs> And I threw an Avenger Cycle Works sticker on there. little plug for Avenger. But yeah, that is my regular helmet that I wear all the time. And I love it. I highly recommend Torque. They're kind of a smaller brand. They're not as big as, say, Icon or uh, Bell, Showy, any of those guys. Torque is a little smaller brand. But they have good quality gear at a decent, affordable price. They're kind of comparable to HJC. That's the price range you'd be looking at. So, that's the Torque Prodigy T10. Helmet number two is a little older, and this is the Zox Thunder R. Now, I love this thing because in shape, it's very similar to the Icon Alliance. It's got the dual vents on the top, but it's naked down the center, which I like because I, I dig mohawks on helmets. I think it's a cool look. I love the 3M rubber adhesive style. I'm not a big fan of the broom bristle, like Marvin the Martian looking stuff. So there you go. This one is my moto vlogging helmet, obviously. <laughs> you guys have probably seen the video where I talk about my camera setup. But this is the helmet that I use for vlogging because it's a little older and I'm not so worried about hurting it by sticking mounts to it and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I rock a Drift HD 170 Stealth. That's kind of my thing. I like the camera. It's very user friendly. And I got it at a deal from Mr. Mishift, so thank you, Mr. Mishift. Also, a little shout-out to Nickname and NoSquidding.com. Awesome stickers. I plan on grabbing some more for the Prodigy and also for the bike at some point. Not sure when that'll happen, but it's going to happen. <laughs> uh, the FCCF is Forever Crusaders, Crusaders Forever. And Motorcycle Safety Foundation sticker because I like being reflective. Uh, the Zox Thunder R is no longer in production. Now they have, I believe it's called the R2, which is similar but has a spoiler on the back up here. So it's not totally naked down the center. It's a little bit different shape. And the Zox Thunder R had speakers built in with a cable that ran out the bottom here. You can kind of see it. There you go. And so you would have the ability to attach your MP3 player to your helmet and listen to music. I liked that it came stock with the speakers because I used to rock music all the time. However, the speakers eventually died after about a year. One of the cables just wore out, and so it doesn't work anymore. And I am having a hell of a time finding just the replacement speakers. If I could find just the replacement speakers, I'd buy like five sets and continue to rock music in this and the other helmet, but alas, I cannot. Uh, Chatterbox and other guys offer aftermarket speakers, but I really, really liked the ones in this helmet. So if you guys have any advice on that one, give me a holler. Um, it runs a light smoke lens, because that was all they had available for that helmet. They had a darker one, but whatever, it is what it is. And it's still pretty decently dark, I mean, you can kind of see through it. 
which was kind of nice, but it also has over a year of wear and tear on it, so it's kind of aged. Anyway, that's the Zox Thunder R in white. This is the animal helmet. <laughs> One of my very first videos that I uploaded was uh, of this custom helmet that I made. Now, it's based on an Arashi... I don't remember the model, but it's based on an Arashi helmet. I got it at Cycle Gear with a gold-tinted lens. Um, because this helmet, prior to being animal, was involved in an accident, it had scrapes on the side up here. So it whistled whenever wind hit it. Anytime I was on the freeway, I could hear whistling, and it was terrible. So it was kind of a retired helmet, just kind of sat in the closet, chilling, not really doing anything. And then I decided I wanted to do the animal helmet. So, voila. Me and my brother built this thing out of the Arashi helmet. Now, downside to the Arashi helmet is that the lens fits really close to the shell. So when we did this, I can no longer open the lens. It's pretty much sealed for life. So I drilled some holes in the lens across the top to allow for air venting. It probably actually needs more. But there you have it. And at some point, I will get video of me riding with this helmet because it's awesome and I love it. Um, you guys can thank Tiger Paws for this one. He inspired this helmet with all of his stuff. He's got, like, Darth Vader and uh, Bumblebee, Cookie Monster. He's got all kinds of really badass helmets, and so he inspired me to do this one. All thanks goes to him. And if you guys are interested in seeing me goof off with this helmet, let me know, because it's really fun to ride with, and I would love to get some video for you guys if you're into that. So, that's the Arashi Slash Animal Helmet. Animal! <laughs> now, this helmet is an AFX FX90. That's the model, the FX90. It's a little older helmet from when I first started riding. And this was actually the helmet I did my first couple of moto vlogs in, believe it or not. Now, it's got all kinds of stickers slapped on it because I'm a goober and I had stickers. Dragon goggles and Alpine stars and k &N. Yoshimura, some Jesus stickers, because I am a Christian, uh, with the We All Ride sticker. That was from when the brand We All Ride first started coming out. They weren't really quite as bro as they are now. Now they're kind of recognized for dirt bikes and stuff, so I feel like a loser. And the Make Your Move, that was actually off a K&N sticker, but I really liked sticking it right there so people could see it. Um, this helmet was awesome with one small problem. When I got it, it was one size too large. So for most of the career of this helmet, it's been too loose. But, as you can see, 3M adhesive mohawk, split at the spoiler there. This helmet was awesome. Like I said, the only problem I ever had with it was that it was a size too big, so you'd get this number on the freeway. The wind would just catch it and wobble it around on my head, and it irritated the hell out of me. Over the course of the last few years, I have since whittled it down to a smaller size with my other helmets, so... This one was awesome. <laughs> it was. It, there's a lot of memories in this helmet, but uh, there's not a whole lot I can say about it because it's ancient and I haven't worn it in forever, but I kind of hold on to it as a memento of what used to be. <laughs> so, that's that. That's the AFX FX90. And last, but certainly not least, is the Icon Alliance SS Type 1. This is an older Icon helmet that my father found at a yard sale. He got it for a ridiculously cheap dollar amount, and so I was really impressed. But it doesn't fit him, so he gave it to me. And I have worn this maybe three times while I rode, just to kind of test it out. I really like Icon helmets, but let's be honest, this one I actually intended to sell. I put it on Craigslist a couple times, trying to see if anybody would buy it. It is essentially brand new. It's been worn literally less than five times ever. I mean, the, the inside still smells like new helmet, looks like new helmet. I haven't ever stuck any motovlogging equipment on it or anything. I considered making it a purpose helmet for motovlogging, but it's a little bit loose, and I know that if I wear it for a considerable amount of time, it'll break in and be too big. So, this is kind of like a, a show helmet, basically. I wear it when I'm going somewhere where I want to look super clean. Um, I've considered using it as like a funeral helmet, because it's black and silver and kind of somber looking. I, I don't know if that makes any sense to you guys, but it made sense to me when I said it. <laughs> and obviously clear lens, there's no smoke on this one. I considered going with like a silver or something, 
But uh, that's that. You guys probably won't ever see me riding in this helmet, but it's in my closet. And hey, if any of you wants to buy it, you can PM me and I will chat with you about that. It is kind of for sale, I guess, if you were really interested in it and wanted to have like a piece of Fire Guys memorabilia or some crap like that. But anyway, that is the Icon Alliance SS Type 1. And what I really like about it is, again, naked down the center. So if you wanted to, this accepts a mohawk readily and is a very comfortable, very quiet helmet. Uh, you know, you can't go wrong with Icon. So there you have it. Icon Alliance. This is my leathers. Um, sad to say... There are no tags left in this jacket. It is completely and utterly worn to the point where I can't read any of the tags inside it. So I can't really give you guys any information as far as what brand or what size, anything. Um, all I really know for sure is that it's an old school leather biker jacket that my father had in the 90s when he rode his bike. And he handed me down this jacket kind of as an heirloom thing and so I rocked the crap out of it. Uh, it has been involved in an accident with a car and it's been rubbed kind of roughly there but it hasn't given me any problems as far as air leaks or anything so I continue to wear it and uh... it's an awesome jacket, I've had to replace the zipper on it, that kind of thing, but all in all it's an excellent jacket and I really recommend that if you guys are the kind of people that can rock just plain old school leathers they tend to break in and wear in and be very comfortable and durable I can't speak for a lot of the bigger name brands like Alpine Stars or Icon because I don't wear their gear for the most part. So, this kind of stuff you can pick up at pretty much any biker leather shop. Uh, there's like Renegade Classics, Cycle Gear carries some brands, that kind of thing. But any of these kind of old school jackets are built to last. And if you can find them from an old school dealer, like an old independent biker shop, I always recommend going to those kind of places because they care more about their quality and less about their dollar amount. So, that's a badass jacket, but I have no info to give you. So there you have that one. This is a Frank Thomas XTI mesh jacket with internal liner. Now this jacket is a size too small. Why? Because it used to belong to someone else in my family, and so it doesn't quite fit. <laughs> but I love the mesh jacket, and it fits well enough that if I'm going someplace where I feel like I need the armor, but I'm also hot, then I'll wear the mesh under my vest or whatever. Um, I've had a few different textile jackets, and this one pretty much rocks as far as durability. It's got the pockets for armor plating in the shoulders and elbows, but I took the plating out because I don't like the way it feels. And it does have an external steel plate on the shoulders. So if I go down, there is still some protection in the shoulder. Um, the liner is in there as well. Now The liner is basically a separate windbreaker style jacket. The sleeves are just scrunchy. It doesn't actually snap in in any kind of way. So that's kind of a downer, but again, I don't typically wear this jacket when it's cold enough to need the liner. It's just kind of in the closet for days when it's hot and I need mesh. So there you go. That's the Frank Thomas XTI. This is the Joe Rocket Atomic version 1.0. Uh, there is now an Atomic Two, I think, on the market. They no longer make this jacket, especially the one in the yellow. So if you find one and you're into yellow, grab it, keep it, because they don't make them anymore. This was my first ever riding jacket. As you can see, it's got some like goofy patches stuck on it because I was super into patches. I still firmly believe in the yin yang symbol. Um, little side note on that: yin yang is a symbol in Asian philosophy, which symbolizes that every good has some bad and every bad has some good. It's a concept that I try to apply. Yes, I am a Christian, but I go for Asian philosophy sometimes as well when it fits. So there you have that. Uh, this jacket is epic. I've worn it for years. I left the armor in the elbow, but not the shoulder because it didn't feel quite comfy. It's got a back plate in it in the center and a zip-in liner. The zip-in liner is the vest style, so it doesn't cover the arms, but it's a fairly comfortable jacket, and like I said, it's really old. It's like super stained from how much I've worn it. If you guys see this in a video, it will probably be after I dye it. I want to dye it completely black. Now, I know they don't make this jacket anymore, etc., but I don't have a yellow bike, and I kind of look like a pack of Skittles rolling down the road right now with Buzz and a black and yellow jacket. So, 
I'm going to die the damn thing. <laughs> but that's the Joe Rocket Atomic. This is an older field shear jacket. I'm not sure on the model because it's ancient. I got it off Craigslist from some guy that was parting with his bike and he didn't need the jacket anymore. So it's been in my family for a while. It's kind of been chilling in the closet. But when I feel like I need leathers, this is what I wear because it's perforated. The whole front of that, I don't know if you guys can tell. Now you can. There you go. The whole front and the sleeves over there, it's all perforated. And I like perforations. I like to be able to breathe. Uh, had a zip-in liner, doesn't anymore. I lost it somewhere. Uh, it's got the back plate in it, obviously. Awesome, awesome jacket. It's the only piece of field shear equipment I've ever had the pleasure of wearing, but it is very comfortable. The only issue I've ever had with it is that it fits a little tight in the shoulders, and so the seams tend to bunch up my t-shirts, sleeves, and it gets kind of goofy if you're rocking it for a long period of time and you can't get it off and adjust it. Um, this would obviously not be something I would wear for long distances, but in the canyon, I trust this jacket to take a hit. It's got double reinforced padding here. Even without the plates in it, it's super thick and super sturdy. So, I would highly recommend this jacket if you can find one that's like it. Cool. Like I said, I'm not sure the model, but Field Shear's a good brand, and I love this jacket. So, that's the Field Shear. Vest time! Now I'm going to go over my old vest and my new vest, and before you guys drop any comments about being a squid, I don't want to hear it. Most of the time, I wear my vest over a jacket of some kind, but you will see me wearing a vest over flannel, vest over a hoodie, that kind of thing. Um, without getting too deep into the gear debate, I like wearing a vest, and there are many people like me. There are times when it's cool to wear a vest, and when you have the experience... Whatever. I'm not going to have the gear argument in these videos. Uh, my first vest was an X-Element mesh vest. It's got yellow tokens down the side, which are cool for visibility, but the thing wasn't visible enough for me, so on the back, I added reflective stripes. There's a few patches there. One for Mom, one for my brother, and one for Peaches, his fiancé person, because they always have my back. Um, Drug-free patch there. These are my church clothes there. <laughs> uh, I used to rock those patches for the old club I was with, the Mad Max crew, on this vest. So it all kind of matched. Um, obviously some pins there because I like to express myself. Erin Gobrag, because I'm Irish. Purity is not a crime because I'm straight edge. That kind of thing. You know, just your typical club vest with some stuff on it, some little flash. Um... I really liked the mesh vest because it was really breathable and I could wear it comfortably no matter what I was doing. It does have a pocket here and a pocket here and they go pretty much the whole length of those pads. So you could fold a piece of paper and stick it in there no problem, put your wallet in there, whatever. Um, I recommend the vest if you're a vest wearing kind of person. It kind of looks like a SWAT tactical style vest but they're very comfortable. And they go over other gear very well. So if you're the kind of guy that likes the vest that's a good one, and you can find them on all kinds of stores online. Um, now, the current vest I'm wearing is the Speed and Strength Tough as Nails vest. Before this one, I had my stuff for the club on a Sons of Anarchy style vest. That one has since been retired for me because it was too large. Uh, I bought it specifically to fit over my jackets and stuff and then found that for the most part when I'm wearing the club vest I'm not wearing a jacket so the vest is just too big to work in comfortably and mosey around so I moved on to this one because it fits a lot tighter uh, another added bonus this vest does have a plate in the back very strong vest it's built specifically for club guys that are going to be wearing vests and still want to have some layer of protection uh, it's a really cool vest it's perforated down the front but it's still keeps a lot of the wind off me. It's a very good wind stopper, so I like that about it. Um, I removed the straps that were on the side here and just pinned down these buckles because I think they look dope. But I need to pull off the straps so I could add the sidebars for the club. The clean and sober swords would have been covered by the straps and I didn't want that, so I just removed those. Um, this is an awesome vest. This is actually a medium and it fits me pretty well, so for those of you who ever decide to meet me, you get an idea for the size. Um, Again, Speed and Strength, bam! Speed and Strength is a smaller brand. They're growing rapidly, though, kind of like Torque. Um, Speed and Strength is similar quality to Icon, in my opinion. 
They have very good, solid gear. I've had the pleasure of wearing some of their gloves. I have club brothers who wear their helmets and their jackets, and they love their stuff. I personally love this vest. It's got a pocket on the inside, right there. And it's also got stealth pockets. There's a zipper there. And those stealth pockets go this whole panel. And they're on both sides. So, awesome, awesome vest there. Highly recommend that if you're into this kind of thing, but don't steal my idea. <laughs> as far as I know, I'm one of the few motorcycle club guys that rocks this vest in the club circle that I'm in. So there you have the speed and strength tough as nails and the X element mesh. Glove time! <laughs> I'm going to go over the three pairs of gloves that I wear most often because they're awesome and I pretty much have just worn them over time. Uh, the first pair of gloves I had out of these sets were the Icon 29ers. These are cool because they only run you 29 bucks. <laughs> they are mesh on the outside with some thick foam for the knuckle here. Velcro there and leather internal. I like the leather internal because it doesn't wear out when I'm on the throttle and that kind of thing. I added these little loops here that I had pulled off an older pair of gloves. And I also added the knuckle spikes that you see there because I'm cool and I like spikes. <laughs> now those are great because they breathe really well but they do offer some additional protection and I'm in California so for like eight months out of the year it's freaking sunny here. Since those, my Prez donated some deerskin thicker gloves. I have no idea what brand these are, but they are deep. I mean, they're gauntlet style, so they go up the sleeves, and they're thick. The cool thing about those is that they are water resistant, so I wear those in the rain and extreme cold because they're a better glove for that kind of condition. They do kind of make me feel like an astronaut or a scuba diver, like I don't have full sensitivity in my hand, but they make up for it by being awesomely warm. Now, the gloves that you guys will see me wear the most are the Snap-on Super Cuffs. These are super cuff carbons. The reason they call them carbons is because they have carbon fiber knuckles, or Kevlar, or whatever. They are badass gloves, and I love them. The reason I like these is because they are built to last. They have leather on the inside, a reinforced palm there, and the Kevlar knuckle. Now, obviously, these are mechanic gloves, essentially. But the reason they make them like that is because these guys are turning wrenches and dealing with heavy machinery, and they don't want to have their hands crushed. So... These are badass gloves. I have actually had the pleasure of knocking on a window with these to catch a driver's attention, and they're awesome. I have, have no problems with going down in these. I trust them to protect my hands. Um, again, I added some leather loops there, and the reason I do that, you guys might see in some of my videos, is that I attach carabiners to my gloves, and I use the carabiner to attach the gloves to a belt loop on my pants, typically on my left side. Um, the reason I do that is because I don't like leaving my gloves inside my helmet. It tends to make my helmet smell sweaty. And um, that way I don't ever, ever have to worry about somebody stealing my gloves. I just clip them to my waist and then they're there. And if I need to throw them on real quick to handle something hot or jump on someone else's bike and move it or whatever, I have my gloves easy and quickly accessible. Um, if you guys want more advice on how to do that, I can show you the little, I can make a little tutorial on like how to make the little leather loops and that kind of thing. But anyway, that's just my kooky little thing that my family does. Uh, and that's my gloves. Okay, so, riding jeans. I am a huge proponent for riding jeans. Um, they tend to, sorry, I had to scratch my hand there. <laughs> they tend to be a little more flexible than full on riding leathers. I know there's a lot of guys that carve canyons and stuff that wear full-on leathers, and that's great for them, but my life needs to be a little more flexible than that. Typically, I'm riding into an event where I'm going to be there camping all weekend, and leather pants just don't work. So, I am a huge proponent for riding jeans. They typically have CE-approved knee protection, like plates that go into the knees of the pant, and you can remove those. I like that feature because I'm going to be doing some canyon riding. I can just slip them in real quick, and then put on the pants. When I get where I'm going, I can pull the plates out and camp for the weekend without the issue of armor on my knees. The Dragon Jeans are an awesome, awesome brand. I will try to include a link down below somewhere, uh, I don't know, somewhere, that will show the actual promo video that Dragon Jeans created for themselves because it's badass. 
That's the logo there. Dragon jeans. Bam. Awesome pants. You get a pair for about 120 bucks. They are worth every single penny, I swear to you. I've been wearing these for over a year now, and I have no wear and tear on them. There's no fading, no scrape marks, no stray threads, except at the bottom where I walk on them all the time. And it is worth mentioning that that part does not have the Kevlar inweave. That's just thick, uh, straight denim. There's nothing there to keep that from fraying. So, there's that. I also wear Cortec DX riding jeans. I'm wearing them right now, so you don't get to have a full view. But uh, these also have the Kevlar inweave on the knees and the ass. So you get some protection from these too. And they again have the pocket for insertable armor. Uh, these are a little bit lighter. They're a little bit... Uh, it's upside down. Sorry, I don't know what I'm doing there. <laughs> these are not quite as sturdy a... Here, we'll try this way. Not quite as thick denim, but that's why I like them, is because they're a little bit lighter. The Dragon Jeans are very heavy grade denim. These are a little lighter, but they're still very sturdy, and again, because they're blue jeans, you'll see I've got some oil stains, that kind of thing on them, but not, not really a whole lot of fading or issues with fraying, except on the backs, where I tend to walk on them a lot. And again, these are awesome, sturdy pants. I highly recommend them. Cortec DXs. So there you have it. Uh, like I said, I don't own leather riding pants. If I did, I would be sure to talk about those, but I really don't see the functionality in them, so I stick with riding jeans. More of a flexible, all-around kind of piece of equipment, and I highly recommend it. One last piece of equipment that I know gets overlooked quite a bit, but I'm going to talk about it because it matters to me. You guys will often see in face shots of me that I'm wearing a bandana under my helmet. Now, typically, I will wear silver or blue because those are the club colors. But every now and then when those ones need to go in the laundry, you'll see me rocking green or black or whatever other color I happen to have at the time. Um, the color is kind of important because I want to rock the club colors. But more importantly, bandanas are super flexible. Uh, I've seen guys wear the balaclavas and that kind of thing, but I highly recommend the bandana. It's cheap. You can get them at, like, Walmart for a buck. It's no big deal. You can find them pretty much all over the place. Um, I fold mine into a triangle and then knot it at the back. You can rock these, like, cowboy western style. You can wear them over your head like a do-rag. I love the bandana. It's such a flexible piece of equipment. And when it's cold, you can actually wrap it around your face cowboy style. And uh, it helps keep the warmth on your face, helps keep the wind off. I also like it because it keeps wind off my neck. It cuts down on wind noise to have that little piece of fabric underneath my chin sealing off that area so wind can't come up from underneath the helmet. Um, if you guys have any questions about that, cool, ask me. Otherwise, I just figured I'd throw that in there because it doesn't seem like a big deal, but you guys will see me rocking it a lot, and there is a very logical reason behind it. Try it once when it's a little chilly outside, and you will see what I'm talking about. Wear the bandana cowboy style, and you will see a difference, I promise you. <laughs> anyway, that's that piece of equipment. I do consider it a piece of equipment. I very rarely leave the house without a bandana, whether I'm on the bike or not, because they're awesome. I mean, you can use them to wipe your hands off, use them as a tourniquet if you crash, whatever. These things are super flexible. I'm goofy about little pieces of equipment like that. So there you have it. Alright guys, that concludes my gear video slash series. Not sure what I decided to do with it yet, because I had realized I have like a shit ton of gear. And yeah, I'm rocking the bandana cowboy style because it was easier than grabbing the helmet and putting it on. But this is pretty much how you'll see me wear it under the helmet. Um, <laughs> I hope you guys liked the gear video. I hope it was informative. And if you guys have any questions about the gear that I wear, where I got it, how it fits, how I like it, whatever, feel free to comment down below or shoot me a PM. Either way. Um, I don't know, I have a lot of gear, <laughs> but uh, it all gets used. I feel like kind of a goober when I put it all out on the bed at once and kind of see how much stuff I've collected, but anybody that rides knows everything has its use. So, like I said, if you guys have any questions, ask, and I will see you on the next one.